Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Paula Fike, a faculty member with um, Accounting 101. And this is week three of this course. And of course, this is your online lecture for week three. I want to reemphasize the schedule for the, these particular live sessions for this mod. Uh, since I'm the first one out of the shoot at 11 o'clock on Mondays, I'm the one who does the um, instructional one-hour lecture. The other faculty who is also teaching Accounting 101 and 102, this mod, will be hosting live one-on-one -on -one sessions with faculty. This is where you can go in same locations as you uh, go to the live lectures, you go in and basically um, have a one-on-one -on -one with, with an instructor. If you're in my class and you still have questions after you hear my lecture that's recorded and given to all these sessions, you can, my students can go into Nat Natasha's or Matt's or Richard's or Carrie's or Jeannie's and, and get their questions answered by a faculty member. And we have Sam. Hi, Sam. Can you type in your uh, last name? And welcome. OK, so we have this. This is a, a, an extreme uh, benefit to you all because you have like one on one with your instructor team. In addition to being able to have one-on-ones with your instructors, you also still have access to the tutoring services through Shark, but the uh, actual tutor that's uh, uh, assigned to accounting this time is Mary Ann Stratford, and right here are her hours. Basically, they're, they begin at 4 p.m. 5 p.m. on Saturday and go to 7 or 8 or 10 or midnight, depending on the evening in the, uh, the schedule. Um, and basically, this last sign that says, we are here to help you. We are all here to help you and help you succeed. And we have Crystal. Hi, Crystal. Can you type in your last name, please? Welcome. So today's agenda, we are going to cover Chapter 4. And we're going to then, after that, I'm going to walk you through the overview of our home, this week's homework assignment and actually tell you what we're looking for and work uh, probably one of, the, uh, one of the transactions for you to see how it flows throughout the whole assignment so you know what to do with it. And then we'll open it up for questions. but. Uh, questions can be asked from uh, the, the attendees at any time, so I'll try to um, keep an eye out from, uh, from the chat box, and um, we'll go from there. Is everyone who's uh, with us now uh, ready for me to start? Everyone says yes. They're so happy to be in accounting on Monday morning. Okay, so um, I kind of, um, I have two more things before we actually go into Chapter 4. My advice for success in this class is remember that Accounting 101 and 102 in that matter is not a course you can complete over a weekend. So please, uh, whatever um, position you are in in this course right now, Use these last two weeks to really make the effort. Uh, if you continue the effort, that's great. If you're just starting your effort, it's not too late. But just don't start it Saturday in week four. You will not succeed. I can almost guarantee that. I suggest personally that you read the textbook. Even if the textbook's confusing and, and it raises more questions in your mind than um, it answers, it gets you thinking, it gets you familiar with the subject, then the, watch the mega lectures. 
Those lectures are uh, around 10 to 15 minutes, and they are covering the actual chapters. And then keep up with your course daily. Don't lose any points for late work. I just graded uh, week two, and there were many people who didn't do the, um, uh, the discussion forum, or if they did, they did two of the posts instead of the third. So they, they lose points, and some people don't even log in every day to, to get the five points daily for the, um, or what do you call it, uh, the quiz, the, uh, the daily checkpoints. Don't throw any points away. Keep up with the work daily. Uh, participate in these online sessions, and remember that the student success team is here to help you. We are all here to help you. Uh, and I just did all the reminders. So let's start with chapter four. I know I said chapter three, but today is chapter four. And do we have any more people? We have Crystal, and we have Nancy, and we have Sam. Anytime you have questions, um, please type them in, and um, I'll stop right there and answer them. Because if you have a question, probably everyone who's listening to this lecture recording, either recorded or live, probably have the same questions. So here we go. Uh, today we're going to introduce the general journal and the general ledger. These, this accounting course builds on each, on each session, builds on the previous session. Remember week one, we were just evaluating what a transaction is, what increases and what decreases. In week two, we took those increases and decreases and made them debits and credits and debits increase certain accounts and credits increase other certain accounts. But we also know that assets equal liabilities and equity. And we also know that debits have to equal credits and everything has to balance. That was last week's lessons. Now this week, uh, we're going to take where we used the T accounts last week. We're using those T account, the work that we did with the T accounts, to then go into the general journal and transition into the general ledger. So section one's objectives is to record transactions in the general journal and to prepare compound journal entries. So this is the first time I think you've seen this. Uh, this is the accounting cycle. It's, it's in your textbook. But it goes from step one, analyze transactions. We did that in week one. That's when we were saying um, you wrote a check to pay current month's rent. What happened to which account? That's when we were saying that when we wrote the check for rent, cash goes down, rent expense goes up. It's analyzing the transaction. Then. The next step is to journalize the data about those transactions. That's what we're going to cover today. And post transactions to the ledger. That's going to be today. Um, let's see. So now we're talking about the second, the second step, which is the journal. Just like your personal journal, which is a chronological listing of, of entries of what we did today, what I ate today, how I felt today. It's a chronological diary of your personal activities. Well, a journal in business and accounting is a diary of the business activities. And there are different types of accounting journals. And transactions are entered into a journal in chronological order. Just like you have to live through Monday in order to write in your personal journal Monday's events. You cannot write next Thursday's events today because Thursday hasn't happened yet. You don't know how you're going to feel, right? So 
Same with business. You do not know the transaction, the transactions that are being required next Thursday because you haven't received the mail Thursday to see which checks have come in. You haven't lived through the business day of Thursday. So it makes sense that uh, transactions in a journal are listed in chronological order. This is what a general journal form looks like. The first step is to enter the account to be debited. And that's all, always done first. So in this case, we're receiving cash. Enter the amount on the same line as in the debit column. So we receive a we're journalizing $100,000 into the cash account on November 6th. Now we're going to put the account to be credited, Carolyn Wells Capital, and we're going to put the amount on the same line in the credit column. Okay, so here we have debit of $100,000 going to cash. We have credit of $100,000 going to capital, Carolyn Wells Capital Account. Do you see where the debit is to the left and the credit is to the right? And we've indented the account to be, to be credited. We've indented, we've intended it. So it kind of looks like this would be a debit account and this would be the credit account. This, the second line is indented, just similar to how it looks with the credit column. This $100,000 looks like it would be indented also. So these the two things run in parallel. So if a journal entry was written properly and I didn't have access to see the debit or credit columns. Just by looking at the titles, I would know which ones, which accounts were debited and which accounts were credited just by if they, if they were listed first, their debits, if they were listed second, their credits, but even more importantly, the, the credit column, the credit accounts are always indented. Very important to have these in proper journal entry formats. Okay, I want to say one more thing. And usually at the bottom right here, you put in the reason for this transaction. And if you get stuck with writer's block, you can always say, you can always begin it with to record. So the reason for this would be to record owner's capital contribution, to record payment of rent, to record receipt of cash from customer to record is always a good starting words for the sentence that you're going to be writing on what why is this journal entry being made so that's the journal entry now to record a business transaction you analyze a financial event does that sound very familiar from weeks one and two i hope so uh, you analyze the event first. You identify the accounts that's affected. You classify the accounts. Classify them. Are they assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, expense accounts? Then you determine the amount of increase or decrease for each of those accounts that you identified to be affected. Then you apply the rules of debits and credits. Which account would be debited and for what amount? Which account would be credited and for which amount? And then you make the entry into a T account form. 
we don't know what a T account is yet. And then you make, uh, we do know what a T account is, but then you make the, then you record the complete entry into the general journal form. So let's see how that really works. Um, you're going to, so far does, I'll ask the group, is what we just covered here, does it make sense? Do you kind of see how this will flow? Okay, one person says absolutely yes, and the other two are very quiet. Crystal's, okay, good, thank you. So there, everyone seems to be good at this point. So um, let's go on to the general ledger. We're going to post the journal entries, the entry that we just journalized, to the general ledger accounts. And we're going to make correction to errors that we make in the journal or the ledger. Because I make errors, I think everyone does. Uh, do you all make some errors, mistakes? Well, this group says they're all perfect. <laughs> they basically said, yes, we make mistakes too. Oh, I do all the time. I always try to make things backwards. So anyway, a ledgers. The ledger contains a separate form for each account. And it's the third step of the accounting cycle is to post the general journals transactions into the general ledger. The process of transferring the data from the journal to the ledger is known as posting. So what is posting? It's the process of transferring the data from the journal to the ledger. And um, here is an example of a ledger account form. I'm gonna move this up a little bit. So basically, this is the account for cash. The only items that will be listed on here will be as impacting the cash account only. The cash account in this situation is account number 101. If you post something to account 101, it will be to the cash account. If you post something to cash, it will be account 101. It's another title for this cash account. Account number 101. And for each company, account cash for the account number for cash will be a different number. I had a company uh, that I worked for, and they had 16 digit long account numbers. So it was 101010000000 until we filled up 16 characters because each grouping of the digits resulted uh, referred to which which subsidiary are you in which division are you in which manager group are you in it was very much of a responsibility reporting uh, structure built into the 16 digit account number so don't think that every company you work with has account being the account for cash being account 101. It's just on for this company that we're doing in this course, cash is account 101. And we have the, a column for the date, we have a column for the description, we have a column for posting references, which we will cover in a minute, a column for the debit, and a column for the credit. And then here's where we do the balances. So I'm going to ask my group here. Do you see see my cursor? What what form is it? What what uh, am I kind of tracing here? Is it a capital letter of some sort? Yes, it's a T account. This is exactly a T account, except this is a formal format of the T accounts that we were using in last week's homework. So this is essentially a ledger account 
is essentially uh, a T account for each and every account that we have available to use in our ledger system. And that's all it is. And this is over here, where's my, over here under balance is exactly what we were talking about earlier in our homework last week. If we had a $100,000 debit and a $20,000 credit, our balance would be $80,000 debit balance in this account. If we had a $100,000 debit and a $200,000 credit, the balance would be a $100,000 credit. This is just the balance of all the transactions in this particular account. So you have the account name and number. You have the columns for date, description, and posting references. And you have a column for debit and credit balance and credit balance. So there's five steps to posting. Step one is to uh, enter a description of the entry, if any. Uh, and usually the routine entries do not require descriptions. So basically you enter the date of the transaction. Second, on the ledger form, on that T-account form, you enter the general journal page in the posting reference column. So right here, and since this is the general, the general ledger, the T-account, posting reference, this comes from the general journal, J, page one. So that was where this particular journal entry was posted in the ledger, in the, in the journal. Secondly, on the ledger form, you enter the debit amount in the debit column or the credit amount in the credit column. And on the ledger form, you compute the balance and enter it into the debit or credit balance column. And then on the journal, you're going back to the, to the original journal in the journal entry, and you put the ledger account number in the posting reference column there. Here's an example. Um, so step one, you're going to transfer the date from the general journal to the general ledger T account, in this case for equipment. So November 7th gets transferred down to November 7th. Step two, this is the general journal, J, general journal, page one. That's where the posting reference goes, J1. Third is on the ledger form, enter the debit amount in the debit column, or if it's a credit to this account, the credit amount to the credit column. So we are debiting equipment with $5,000. So we're going to have to write in $5,000 into the general ledger account right here. Then we're going to uh, compute the balance. So since this account had no balance in it to begin with, by taking a previous balance of zero and adding to it a debit balance, a debit transaction of 5,000, your balance now is 5,000. Then on the general journal, enter the ledger account number in the posting reference column. So now you're going to then take the 141, which is the account number for the equipment account, and you're going to post it into the general journal itself, and it's going to be 141. Now this is one part of the transaction. This is just the equipment part of the general journal entry. The next part would be having a blue section just like this except for cash. And cash would be credited 
by 5,000, and it would have 5,000 reduced from its going balance. So the difference between the journal and the ledger is that the journal entry touch uh, for each entry you have to have two at least two accounts impacted sometimes more depending on if it's a complex journal entry so you have at least two journal two accounts impacted and then so to figure out the balance of each of these accounts they each have their t accounts or their general ledger accounts so there's going to be a, a blue page for each one of these accounts in the company's accounting system. So the second part of this posting would go to the cash page, the cash blue page, and you would post the credit to the cash blue page. Same process, just the other side. Is that it? It can't be yet. Well, it sure is it. Okay, so this has been a probably a complex day. So I'm going to go to the um, homework from last week and compare it to the homework for this week and walk through how I would do the homework. Is that something that would be um, desirable from the people who are attending today? They're being silent, they're saying yes, please. Okay, so let's go to Okay, last week's assignment, remember we had to determine the account type, is it asset, liabilities, owner's equity, that was just to get us used to what type of accounts are these particular accounts. And then the second part was to put into T accounts uh, the amounts for each one of these transactions. So last time we had to say, on the third, Jay Joan visits her local bank and withdraws $50,000 from her personal savings, deposits the cash into a new bank account in the name of the business, Smith Consultants. So that's where we, week two, that's where we actually came down here and said, well, the business received cash of $50,000. Let me enable editing. Okay. Cash of 50000 and owner's equity got increased by 50000 And we did that for each and every one of our transactions that we were presented in this list in our homework. Uh, was everyone pretty good doing last week's homework? between Sam, Crystal, and Nancy. Good. So it's just going to do exactly what we did last week, except we're going to add another step. So um, let's look at assignments for week three. The assignment. Okay, and we have a template just like last time. We have it pulled down already. And uh, a note in red the journal and ledger are on different tabs within the workbook. 
don't forget to post. And you'll see what I mean by that in a minute when we go to the file itself. So part one, you're going to be journalizing the November transactions from week two, and those transactions are listed again below. And then you have December transactions also that you need to journalize. So here's all of the accounts that we have access to. Don't make up any new accounts. And then here are the November transactions. Gee, this is one I just read. Jay Jones visits her local bank and withdraws 50000 from her personal savings account, depositing cash in a new bank account in the name of the business. And these all should be very familiar to you since you worked them last week in your homework. And then here's December's transactions. Same type of transactions, just in the month of December. Uh, you purchase $3,000 of computer equipment. They issue a check for $1,000, and the balance was due in 90 days on the invoice. So it's the same type of journal entries that we did last week, except now you have two months. You have a month of November and a month of December to do. Okay, so you have to journalize and then post. These are kind of like the QuickBooks. Yeah, exactly, Crystal. If you're used to using QuickBooks, QuickBooks has a journal entry section in it that you can do journal entries that goes to the ledger. And QuickBooks, when you actually write a check inside of QuickBooks, and you tell it which account to go to, it makes the journal entries for you behind the scenes, and it posts behind the scenes, posts to the ledger accounts also. Good question. Does that, does my response to your question, your comment make sense? And if you want to, uh, next week, since I, I've used QuickBooks, I won't tell you how many years, um, but I've used QuickBooks a long time. And if you want me to do, uh, do a, a tour through QuickBooks to show you what it looks like live, I'll be glad to do that. Is that something that you all would want me to do next week? Very good. And I'll do that then. Uh, and just shows you how a software does the same thing that you're learning hands-on. But you need to learn it hands-on before you can appreciate an accounting system, and so you can use the accounting system properly. I've made a lot of money fixing people's QuickBooks because they don't know the accounting system to begin with, and they've messed it up and mess it up so badly I would have to start totally over and all the entire year's transactions needed to be re-input. So learning the system is very critical at this stage. So let's just look at the, um, the template. Let's see, we and Crystal says she used QuickBooks with your old job, very good. So I'll show you, did you actually get into seeing um, the general journals and the general ledger that the system um, created on behalf of your, your using it? Or did you just stay inside of uh, write check, enter bills, pay bills? Ah, Nancy, okay. Well, you're going to see how it looks next week. Um, QuickBooks is a software used by many small and medium-sized businesses. And it even has an enterprise version to it. So I'll just show you briefly next week how this all ties together in an actual software package. The same concepts that you're learning in this course. Pay bills. So, Crystal, on your pay bills function in QuickBooks, uh, when you enter... When you enter bills, it would debit 
the expense or the asset and would credit accounts payable. So when you did the pay bills function, it would debit the accounts payable, reducing it, and credit your checking account. And if you use that pay bills window, that's the journal entry was being made behind the scenes on your behalf, and also, deb also it was being posted to the general ledger on your behalf. So I'll, I'll show you that next week, live, in person, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, someone said type in next week. Oh yes, okay. Um, so now I want to go to the week three assignment template. And what that red sentence was saying was just don't, when you open up the template, you're in the journalizing and posting window for the general journal. But down here, there's two tabs at the bottom. It opens up in the general journal tab, but then you have a general ledger tab that you also have to work with. So let's see how this all works. Like last week, every place there's a yellow space, your faculty is expecting something in those spaces. So if you're not putting something in those spaces, you're missing something somewhere. Same with over here, okay? So let's look at the actual one of the problems here. And we are going to probably do the first two. Because we've, we've talked about Jay Jones. She visits her bank, withdraws 50000 from her personal account, depositing the cash in a new bank account in the name of the Business Smith Consultants. Now, before I move on to this one, I'm going to make sure I know which exact uh, accounts we have. It's going to be the cash account, 101, and the 301, J Jones Capital. So I'm going to go to here, and I'm going to say cash, and yeah, cash, 50,000. What did I say about the account being credited? Do I just start typing it directly under the C in cash? I indent it, yes. J. Jones Capital. 50,000. I didn't pick up what the date was, so I'm going to pop over to get the date. It's November 3rd. And at this point, I'm going to say to record. What do you think we should complete this sentence? To record what? Any ideas? To record new business to record cash investment. Initial investment, very good, I like that one. Initial investment. And then that's all we can do at this point. Let's do the second one, and then we'll do the next part. Let's go to what the second one is. The second transaction is Jones Consultants issues a check, check number 101, for $2,000 to purchase a computer from Digital Warehouse. Okay, the fifth, check 101, 2000 computer equipment. I'm not going to memorize all of this, but that's okay. You're here to help me. What would the debit account be? 
Would it be cash or would it be computer equipment? Which account? Well, what type of accounts are cash and computer equipment? Asset liability or owner's equity? It is an asset, and an asset to be a debit to an asset would be the account that we would be increasing. So we're going to uh, put in computer equipment. <coughs> and it was $5,000, if I remember right. And then the second line would be indented cash for 5000 2000 was it? OK. Thank you. 2000 and 2000 and here uh, uh, to record check number 101 I believe no 1001 1001 to who did we write the check to? Digital Warehouse Inc. for computer equipment purchase. Something like that. So we just did two journal entries. Then you're going to continue to do these journal entries for this entire two month period of time, just like I did it. And there's all the pieces to it, okay? All those yellow pieces need to be done, but you don't know the posting reference yet. You don't do that until the very last step. Now the next thing we're going to do is after we do all the journal entries in the general journal, we're going to be posting those entries to the general ledger. Let's just take a tour through the general ledger. Week three, journalizing, journalize and post to the, okay, format is important. General ledger. This is the cash account, account number 101. Again, everything in yellow needs to have something in it. At least your faculty member is expecting something in each one of these spaces. And then we have accounts receivable account, account for account of prepaid rent, computer equipment, office furniture. There's, an, there's a section, another, uh, form for every single account on that account list. And you're going to be touching each one of these accounts. Here's fees, income, rent expense. And in the order of these accounts, it's going to be the order that you're used to them anyway. Here's the asset accounts, cash, receivables, prepaid rent, equipment, furniture. Those were all assets. What type of an account is account payable? Asset liabilities or equity? Yes, it's a liability account. So here is a liability account, and then the next group of accounts would be all of your equity accounts. So here's a capital and the drawing account, which we're used, we're used to, yes. Now we have the income account followed by all the expense accounts. So those are all the accounts that we have access to. So let's see what we're going to do and how it's going to look and feel. And at this point, you have to be gentle with yourself and just be very methodical and take it one line at a time. So, November 3rd, cash, $50,000. That's all I need to think about at the moment. 
November 3rd, cash account, 50,000. I'm going to go to the general ledger, go to the cash account, November 3rd. It's going to be a debit of 50,000. And since we have no beginning balance, it's going to be a balance of 50,000. Okay. I know that we just were on the general journal and which page number? Page one. So when we're posting a journal entry right here, what will we put in the posting reference in the ledger for this entry right here? J2, yes, it would be for the general journal, page two. Very good. So we're going to go here, and in the posting reference, we're going to put J1. So that gets us the posting reference in the general ledger. What do we, what, what do, we do with the 101 here? We put that in the journal, in the general journal. So 101, we're going to go to the general journal, go to our, our first line that we're using, and we're going to put 101. Then all of our yellow spaces are done for this line. Then you go to the next line. J. Jones Capital, 50,000. We're going to credit 50,000. So we're going to go up to J. Jones Capital. Before I forget, I'm going to put 50,000 credit. It has no beginning balance, so we're going to put 50,000 here. The posting reference is J1. I'll be good and capitalize the J. And the date is, I think we're in 2004. 15. We'll change that if we need to. And this is November. And this is November 3rd. Okay, it will be 2015. Okay, continuing on with this process. Okay, so we're in the general ledger. J. Jones Capital. Now we're going to have to finish the process with 301. So we're going to take, go to back to the journal, go to number, go to the same line and put 301. You have now journalized a transaction. In the general left in the general journal, and posted that uh, journal entry into the general ledger. And the purpose of these posting references is three months from now, two years from now, someone can go to this journal, this journal, and say, "Oh, here's an entry to J. Jones Capital. I wonder what account it was posted to." Oh, it was posted to account 301. Then they can go to the to the general ledger, go to account 301, and see that it really did get there. Likewise, someone can be doing um, an, an analysis of this account, and they're going, what is this 50000 I don't remember her ever putting $50,000 in as an initial investment. This... We need to do some research on this. I wonder what the original point of entry is. Oh, well, why don't we look in page journal page one and see what the origination is. Then they can go to general journal page one and find the actual transaction as it was journalized. It's a reference and cross-reference uh, ability so we can 
trace and be audited. So let's all, all of us work the second one. Computer equipment, November 5, 2000. We're going to go to computer equipment. It was the debit line, so it's going to be debit 2000. There's no beginning balance to this account. It's a brand new account. So zero balance plus $2,000 debit would give us a $2,000 debit balance. It came still from J1, and our 141 is the account. So we're going to go back to our journal, put in 141, and then we go to the second line, which is cash. Cash. $2,000 credit. Let's go to our cash account. November 5th, J1, credit $2,000. And is this, what do I do with these two columns? With this second transaction. Yes, I subtract them. So we have 50,000. Yeah. You have 50,000 debits and you have 2,000 credit. So that will net out to a $48,000 debit balance. So you just put 48,000 here. Believe me. I've seen this and this many times and it's wrong. And I want to make the point here that it's simply if you have in your if you have your left hand open and you have fifty thousand pieces of a ten, fifty thousand widgets in one hand, your left hand, the debit hand and you take 2,000 of those out and put it in your right hand, what is your balance of the account, which is really how much cash you have? You have $48,000 left in, in this account. Because you, you have a debit of 50, but you took away $2,000 of credits. So you have a $48,000 balance in this account, now let's go back to the journal, because it's account 101, right? And we're going to put 101 here to complete the circle. And the cool thing about this process, if you do it this way, is where you have the last posting reference in your journal entries, that's where you left off. So you can do this a little bit, after you do all the journal entries, uh, you can put the homework aside and come back to it later. And then you're just gonna be doing the posting. And when you get tired of doing the posting, then you're gonna pick it up right under the last posting reference here, because all of these yellow spaces will be filled up already. So where you end up here, you just pick up and start posting some more to the ledger. Then when you're totally done with that process, you're not done yet, but wait, there's more. It's almost done. This is where you can do the celebration dance. This is the trial balance. It's the report that I say, try and balance and see if you do. Uh, this is all the account titles listed above in the general ledger accounts. And you just simply put in here the balance. So at this point, I would probably, I know cash had a debit balance.
Cash has a debit balance of $48,000. So I'm good with that. Uh, what other accounts did we impact? $48,000. Computer equipment was a debit of $2,000. Computer equipment had a debit of 2000 And the capital account I saw on the way down had a balance of 50000 For the totals, I would actually do a subtotal here. You can do that by going to the, to the space and then go up here to Auto Sum and click on Auto Sum. And make sure it's for the entire section here. Enter. And then put your cursor over the little square. Push down and drag over. And it takes the, the summation. It says sum F120 through G131, where this is D120 to E131. Oh. No, I didn't want that. Well, it works either way. Okay. So we have 48,000 plus 2 gets you 50. And 50,000 is 50,000. So debits equal credits. And basically, assets from here to here equals liabilities of nothing plus owner's equity of 50. So everything is still in balance. Everything that we've learned so far, assets equals liabilities plus equity. Assets equals liabilities. Where is it? Liabilities plus equity. 50,000 equals 50,000. And here we proved that after we did our work, 50,000 is still 50,000. Now I'm going to give you a hint of something. Um, what happens if these don't balance? One thing I would do first is to say, what's the difference here? If the difference is 1800. Yeah. If the difference is 1800, then divided by the, the trick is to take the difference and divide it by nine. If it's evenly divisible by nine, you probably transposed. And I transposed here by saying I wrote down 200 when it really should have been 2000. A transposition error can happen when you put the, the same digit but in the wrong space. An example would be this is 2015, this year is 2015. You could have 5012, and the difference here is evenly divisible by nine. There's no decimal points with it. It's, if it's evenly divisible by nine, you could have very easily transposed. And if you did, just very cautiously look to make sure that this is 50,000, 50,000. Did that get put into the general ledger as 50,000 or was it 5,000? Or was it 50? Whatever. Um, so I would take everything and divide by nine to see if that trick worked. The other trick that worked is, and yes, Nancy is right here, is, is it divisible by two? Yeah. 
here we have our differences here, and basically it's 48,000 minus 52,000 is divisible, and that number is evenly divisible by 2. What that tells me is I could have put into a debit column a credit amount, or I could have put into a credit account, a credit column, an amount that should have been debited. And it would come up to be double the amount. Because here we were supposed to have a debit of $2,000 in the debit column, and instead we credited $2,000. We went from a debit of $2,000 that it should have been down to zero, so that's $2,000 difference there. And then we put $2,000 on the other side, so we would be double, we would be off by double the amount of our error. So if you do this and divide by two, and this amount right here, the 2,000, looks familiar, you go, oh, I see the $2,000 is on the credit side. It's a computer equipment, we bought computer equipment. I probably think it should have been on debit, you put it back here, it goes away. The problem goes away. So divisible by 9 gets your transposition problem identified. If it's divisible, evenly divisible by 2, you may have put an amount in the wrong column, debit or credit. So hopefully that helped. Um, any questions from Nancy, Crystal, or Sam? And do you feel confident that you can do the homework? Good. So Crystal's good. Uh, Nancy, you don't need to worry about the errors unless you make them. And then you have to figure out where they are so you can fix them. What does rule mean? Oh, rule. No, you don't need to worry about the errors. Oh. Um, if you... One more thing about errors. If you actually posted, well, in this case, if you, if you did 200 and 200, and it should have been 2,000, in this case, just go back and do 2,000 and make it correct because you really haven't turned in your homework yet. And then you carry the 2,000 to the ledger. But in real life, if you did 200, and 200 instead of 2,000. And then you figured out that you needed to really change that. You cannot change this before this. You cannot change a journal entry or posting after you've made them in real life. So what you would do then, you would do another journal entry, computer equipment, 1800 and cash 1800 and then to record error correction uh, journal entry made on Eleven five for two hundred should have been in the amount of two thousand. This corrects. So basically, you have to do a correcting journal entry to correct this entry because it should have been two thousand, but you actually wrote two hundred in there. It was posted as 200. 
then you have to come in and come in with an $1,800 correcting journal entry. But you don't have to worry about making these correcting entries. Just correct them as you're working on the Excel spreadsheet. Go ahead. If you do that, go ahead and make this 2000 Go ahead and make this 2000 And then go to the general ledger. And that would get the 2000 here. And the 48000 would have been up here anyway. So make the corrections directly into the correct accounts that it should have been to begin with in the ledger and the journal. Does that make sense, Nancy? Good. So, Sam, are you good? Good. And I think Crystal already said that she's good. So, with that, I hope this hour has helped people uh, if not remember you have the live sessions with faculty also teaching the same course and they may say things with different words than I said them but the concept and the experience is the same but it's a it's an ability for you to get one-on-one -on -one help well here we had one on three three on one help because uh, I had three people in today's session and so basically they had uh, we had a three on one so with that being said if there's no other questions I'll say have a great day and uh, be sure to take advantage of every resource available to you to succeed in this accounting course because because as you know uh, week one built was the foundation for week two. Week two was the foundation for week three. Week three would be the foundation for week four. And this course is the foundation for accounting 102. So you have to build a great foundation. So with that being said, I'll say have a good day and goodbye. Until next week.